Hi everybody, my name is Svetlana Raymer and I am the VP of Development and External Affairs with the International Center. In my role I oversee two large areas within our organization. One is development, also known as fundraising, so it's the philanthropic revenue side of the house and in addition to that, our marketing work. So that external affairs piece really has to do with marketing, public relations, being out and about in the community, uh, greeting people who come from foreign countries and really making sure that people in the community here in Indiana, as well as outside of Indiana, know about the International Center and know about the work that we do. I chose this career actually very naturally. So I was born and raised in Ukraine and I finished my four year degree at the university in Kyiv, uh, focusing on international tourism. So I've always been really interested about international affairs. I had dreams of uh, helping foreign visitors come to Ukraine and discover this country as well as helping Ukrainians travel abroad because I really believed in the power of international connections. So when I came to the United States for graduate school, I also uh, did my research on um, in, within the area of international travel, such as destination image and how people perceive different places, why do they want to go to different places. After my master's degree, I moved on to a, a PhD program at Penn State, and I got a little bit deeper into the cultural aspects. I studied diaspora and um, in transnational travel, and and how people who move to foreign countries then come back to their native countries and the cultural experiences that I had that they have the acculturation of these people in their host country so this has been a very natural path for me I spent several years in academia after my PhD after I got my degree uh, and I was teaching in international tourism and travel arena and then I also worked for uh, local governments for a, a local city administration helping with community engagement and so this job at the International Center is now this perfect combination of all of those competencies and all of those skills that I've been practicing my entire life. So this career really chose me and I chose this career and I feel like it is the absolute perfect fit for the past 12 to 14 years of my life. So I really love this question, does your career have an international component? Because my entire work with the International Center is all about international relations. So our organization, the International Center, is Indiana's premier nonprofit in the international affairs arena. And we do so many different things. We are the only organization in the state of Indiana that is certified by the Department of State to receive international visitor leadership program participants through the Global Ties US program. We we also have the only in the state of Indiana a protocol officer who knows how to set up flags and how to set up meetings according to protocol with all the different international visitors such as delegations from overseas, ambassadors, consuls, you name it. We also have um, a program that we offer, James Morris. Um, named, named after James Morris, Global Leadership uh, Development Program, which brings in a cohort of emerging global leaders in every year to learn about different aspects of global leadership, of international business. And so we train them, this cohort, in the course of five months. In addition to that, we provide a lot of connecting of individuals around the international affairs. So we have a series of panels called the International Connections, where we bring in speakers and we allow uh, people to join for a free webinar so they can learn about some burning issues. So we had a panel on Afghan refugees when those were coming into the United States. We just wrapped up a panel about the grassroots efforts in Indiana to help with the crisis in Ukraine and all the different organizations that are working here. So literally every aspect of what we do, uh, our CEO is the honorary consul of France in Indiana. One of our board members is an honorary consul of Portugal in Indiana. One of the good friends of the center is the honorary consul of Latvia in Indiana. So every aspect of the work that we do here is international in its nature.
there is a variety of skills that come in handy with this position. Like I said, I am in charge of both the philanthropic revenue side of the house and our marketing, public relations, and external affairs. It really helps that I'm fluent in Ukrainian, Russian, and English. And I dabbled a little bit. I did a study abroad uh, for a semester in Germany. So I know a few introductory phrases in German. And then throughout my middle and high school, I studied French. So I can at least say, I'm sorry, I don't speak French a whole lot. Do you speak English? Which people normally really, really appreciate. And then they are more, much more willing to sw switch to English. So those those linguistic skills are, of course, of course, really helpful. And whenever we receive International Visitor Leadership Program participants from Russian or Ukrainian speaking countries, I'm always really happy to meet with them and give them that sense of comfort by being able to speak to them in a language that they understand. And then, of course, really, working with a lot of the donors and a lot of the audiences and constituents that we have because for the international center those audiences are truly international the people we have attending our panels the people that we have visiting our state being able to speak to them and address them in a way that is very respectful is absolutely crucial and that is why we are so so fortunate with the center to have our uh, officer of protocol because we go to him to help us understand whenever we have a visitor coming in, how do we speak to this person? How do we receive their business card? Is it with one hand or with the two hands? Is it a handshake? Is it a hug? Is, is it a kiss on the cheek? What is the appropriate greeting? Is it a bow? Every culture has a different way of approaching that. And so we are very fortunate to have a person who can prepare us to do that. And even the office, the governor's office and in Indiana Economic Development Corporation they um, reach out to the International Center, to our Office of Protocol, whenever they travel overseas, which our governor does quite a bit, huge kudos to him. And when they have international visitors coming to Indiana, uh, they can uh, reach out to us and Peter can explain to them the culture of a delegation that they're about to receive or a country that they're about to visit. So those are really crucial competencies and components that we have within the International Center that really help position Indiana as a well-cultured state on the global stage. There are a number of skills that I would say are very crucial in order to succeed in this type of career if you want to work in the realm of international affairs. Of course, a second language, third language, you know, sky's the limit really, competency would be really, really helpful when you can enter the sphere of international affairs. And the International Center is just one of the examples. You could work for a uh, governor's office in, in your respective state. You could work for the local economic development corporation, in the city government, and so in any of these positions you will be encountering people of different cultures. So a foreign language competency is really great. Uh, having had some sort of experience interacting with other cultures is also very valuable. So it doesn't mean that you have to spend the money to travel abroad. You can uh, work with different cultural organizations and clubs and go to various festivals. It just takes a little bit of desire to get yourself exposed to other cultures. There's all sorts of international film festivals that you can go to to really learn about the art and cin cinematography of other cultures and maybe listen to the language a little bit. Uh, one of the trainings that we offer here through the center is a cultural competence training. It's called the CQ. I'm sure you've heard about IQ, EQ, but now we are really starting to talk as the world is becoming more global. We are starting to talk about the CQ, the cultural competency, the ability to collaborate and understand people from other places around the world. So that is a really, really good skill to have. Um, in addition to that, I would say um, really having a genuine interest and a keen desire to get to know people of other cultures. When I was in um, my undergraduate um, program at Kyiv National University, I joined the Kyiv Entity of European Geographic Association. And so what we did, we arranged student exchanges for students from Kyiv University with students from all over Europe. So we got to travel to the Netherlands, we got to travel to Germany, to Poland, to Greece, 
And so those were some of the most valuable experiences that I developed that have steered me onto the path um, that ended up in me being with the International Center. So getting that exposure, getting that interest in international affairs, uh, understanding the world politics. Uh, one of the things when I was teaching at the university uh, and I was teaching international tourism class, one of the tasks, ongoing tasks that students had was to review uh, current international news and present news reports to the rest of the class to say, this is what's happening in the world right now. There's a really famous quote, uh, I believe from Winston Churchill, where one of his um, uh, people who are responsible for you know, giving him reports came in and said, you know, oh, not much is happening in the world today. It's, it's, it's kind of a quiet day. Not, not much is happening in the world. Winston, Winston Churchill frowned and said, well, let's make something happen something is happening in the world at any time. And so staying abreast of all that information and being proactive so that when somebody from a foreign country or just somebody from um, a, a business environment is having a conversation with you and is asking you about some, some sort of current world issue, that you don't come off as a person who doesn't know what's going on outside the four walls of your home or of your state. So really staying keen and staying on top of what's going on in the world would be a really big recommendation. One of the recommendations that I would have for um, students looking to land career in international affairs is to also be very open-minded. Uh, the International Center, and I'm very fortunate to be here, like I've mentioned before, is a very obvious place to land. Uh, but really think broadly, think about different positions within embassies, consulates. And that doesn't mean you need to get a ticket to DC tomorrow. There are representations, like I said, there's, um, in, for example, in Indiana, the only true consulate is uh, Consulate of Mexico. Everybody else is an honorary consul, but um, you know, there are consulates in Chicago and, and a lot of other large cities. You could also be working for a mayor's office or a governor's office or uh, an equivalent of Indiana Economic Development Corporation. There's also a number of nonprofits just here in Indiana, there's us, there's Immigrant Welcome Center, there's Exodus Refugee. So there's a number of nonprofit organizations that work uh, with assisting people from other countries to find their way in America and call uh, America home. So I would just really encourage you to, as you're looking for internships, internships as you're looking for job opportunities, in the general realm of international affairs to really be very open-minded and cast a wide net of opportunities and applications.